Greetings. I'm David Kennedy Bird, the rector at Foundations Collegium. I'm about to introduce you to a good friend of mine, as good a friend as you can have without that person actually existing in the real world. Her name is Jennifer Smith. Jennifer Smith has been one of our mascots at Foundations Collegium for years now. She serves as the classic example of someone who hasn't really thought much about her worldview. Does she indeed exist? Well, that depends on what you mean by exist. Her metaphysical status is uncertain. She's really sort of a mythical archetype. She is every man. Those of you who insist on politicizing language and who object to my use of the term every man in reference to a woman, why don't you move into this line right over here and we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. The politics of the relationship between gender and language is not really what this video is about. She, Jennifer Smith, who is what this video is about, represents millions of perfectly bright people who have never really traced out the implications of the things that they believe. She's never really given much thought to the key issues of life. She has a worldview, kind of, but it's by default. She just sort of absorbed a lot of miscellaneous beliefs from her family, the church that she attended as a child, various schools that she's attended, movies and TV, the internet, and the culture around her. For instance, she believes that there is a God but she can't tell you why she believes this or connect her beliefs about God to anything else in her life. She doesn't have a very coherent sense of what God is like. She doesn't have a relationship with him. She's sort of a vague cultural deist. Um, she believes in being, you know, we should all be good to one another uh, and we should work together toward a better world. You know, she, could, she could run for Miss America and do really well in the part of the pageant where you um, articulate your highest aspirations. Um, she has some beliefs about what's right and what's wrong, uh, beliefs that she's just sort of collected over the years and has never really subjected to rational scrutiny. She's a bit foggy on the ultimate nature of reality, the purpose of human life, and whether there's an afterlife. Okay, you want to know something a little more concrete about her. I can understand that. She's five feet, five inches tall, she has longish brunette hair. She dress, dresses stylishly, but somewhat conservatively. You know, the long peasant skirts, you know, that, that look. Uh, she's in her late 20s. She's had boyfriends, you know, some of them were kind of serious, but she's never felt ready to take the plunge into marriage. She majored in marketing at UTC. She's very smart. She did very well in her studies. And, uh, and now she's working in sort of a nondescript office at Unum insurance company. A little bit about her religious history. She grew up in a moderately religious home. Her parents took her to Sunday school and services at the United Methodist Church where uh, they were members. Um, but she was never taught uh, that God desires to draw her into a real relationship with himself or that God has come in the flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, she was just given sort of a vague brew of religious humanism blended with some social activism and a lot of rhetoric about tolerance, which has not served her very well in figuring out what's real or important. Where are you likely to encounter her? Haha, <laughs> that's an easy one. You will find her uh, at about 5.30 every afternoon on a business day, sitting at one of those tables out in front of Panera Bread on Market Street in downtown Chattanooga. That's where she goes after work to chill, just to sort of you know, ease down after a mind-numbing day at the office, shuffling papers around and answering the phone. She just she sits in front of Panera with a trashy novel and an iced chai latte and a cinnamon chip scone and just enjoys herself for about an hour. You can catch her between about 5.30 and 6. Um, you know, she she and she reads whatever's been on the bestseller lists. You know, the, the the Lovely Bones, Eat, Pray, Love, The Hunger Games. She's read them all. But let's get back to her worldview, because that's really the interesting thing about Jennifer. Her worldview is a jumble of mutually inconsistent ideas, 
feelings, prejudices, and things that she's seen on TV, uh, stuff she's heard other people say, uh, things that she's read on the internet. There is no unity to her understanding of reality. She got her beliefs about relationships from one set of sources, her political beliefs from another set of sources, her beliefs about God from somewhere else, her beliefs about society and morality from other places. It's all cobbled together into an unstable and inconsistent pile of stuff that really doesn't make any sense. Jennifer Smith is a great gal. I know you would like her. She's not stupid. She's quite intelligent. But she has given way insufficient attention to the things that matter most in life. And that makes her life story a tragedy. You probably know a lot of people who are just like her with the possible exception of the uncertain metaphysical status.